What is up ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Mooman11 here with another attack damage Udyr your jungle guide. Now I've been getting more questions in a mall Santa at Christmas time asking me if the previous Udyr guide still works and for the most part it does. So if you want to check it out for all the beautiful puns, here it is for you. However, since there have been so many changes this season, some that are good and others that are literal cancer, I thought I'd give you guys a new video to play in the background of your steamy YouTube and chill sessions with your smoking hot 100% real and not imaginary 10 out of 10 girlfriend. So without further ado, grab your scuba gear and your Shamu themed flippers cause we're gonna dive right in. To start things off, log into your RuneScape account and go to your Rune page. For mine, I run tier 3 attack damage marks and seals, attack speed glyphs, and lifesteal quintessences. For the newer players though, you'll have a hard time running these exact runes since a full rune page is almost as expensive as the golden toupee that rests upon the almighty and infallible Donald Trump's Oompa Loompa shaped head. Make League of Legends great again Mr. Donald Trump, make it great. Now after you set up your rune page and made Mexico pay for a new border wall, it's time to set up your masteries as well. We'll be running 12 18 0 with the Keystone Mastery being Thunderlord's Decree. Even though Warlord's Bloodlust is even more OP than the Golden Gun in 007 right now, Udyr has enough sustain with his turtle stance and runes to be just fine without it. When you jump into a game, do what any sane person who is just randomly given $500 would do and impulse buy something shiny with it. Since you're thinking short term, why not grab a hunter's machete, three health pots, and a warding trinket instead of making the smart long term decision to invest your earnings into a high yield diversified equity fund run by a senior manager at a respectable investment firm such as TD Ameritrade or Fidelity. Once you've pulled a Kanye West and spent all your cash, head down to your bottom jungle to make sure that no enemies are trying to invade you, and make sure to level up your Q along the way. Just like in Cinderella, when the game clock hits the magical time of 1 minute and 30 seconds, head to Gromp with your bot laners to get there in time for it to spawn. Now, don't smite Gromp, and instead ask for a longer leash from your bot laners who most of the time will be happy to help. Next, put a point in your turtle stance and start attacking blue buff while in tiger stance. In order to achieve maximum effectiveness, switch to your W as soon as it's up to make use of the increased attack speed from your Q. When it's low, smite blue buff and finish off the sentinels in turtle stance to regain some health. Now this next part is truly disturbing. Those furries we dealt with last time are back to wreak havoc on our culturally accepted norms and I for one just won't stand for that. So once you get into that wolf camp, rip those terrorist fursuits off one by one, starting with their leader first, Sparkle Friendship Bark, whose real name is actually Daniel, he just legally changed it to reflect his true self-identity of being a female dog. And once you finish fighting Rainbow Sprint and Pinky Poop, or whatever their names are, we're gonna head down to the river to see if our friend Scuttle is home. Make sure not to level anything up until after you've taken Scuttle out for a nice night on the town to take his mind off of his poor wife Sandra who was, uh, ooh. You know what, I'll, I'll tell you later, I, I don't want you to cry just yet. Anyway, once you've said goodbye to Skull and watered appropriately, put another point into your turtle stance and start attacking Dragon, again initiating with your tiger stance and switching to turtle as soon as possible. As soon as you take any amount of damage, use a health potion. You can also smite Dragon early since it will be ready again when you need it by the end of the fight, and I mean, might as well use any advantage possible since here at the Moo Crew, we're all about fighting smart and fighting dirty. Also, make sure to keep an eye on the minimap to check for any possible surprise attacks. And while you're at it, you can even grab a bag of popcorn as you watch one of your Bronze 6 teammates burn Flash to make a daring escape from the enemy team only to get punched in the genitals with an easy bake oven kit by your good old pal Dragon. Now once you've come to terms with the fact that you'll sometimes be playing with randoms like this who have the same amount of brain cells as a Pop-Tart, go ahead and recall to upgrade your Hunter's Machete into a Stalker's Blade. Then head back down to your bottom jungle and clear out Gromp of the Wolves, which if you think about it, it actually sounds like it could be like an emo screamo group. <laughs> Gromp of the Wolves. After you give a standing ovation to your new favorite scene group and dye your hair purple, level up your bear stance and head to your top jungle to nuzzle XD Rar with the Raptor Camp, because everyone knows Rar means I'm Wood Division 5 in Dinosaur. Unfortunately, you're still stuck with a bunch of random teammates who would struggle to pour water out of a boot even if the instructions were written on the heel. So when your top laner pings for help more times than Adam Sandler has appeared in a terrible movie, you might as well go see if you can help. Now, it's important to make sure that you do have at least one point in your Q, W, and E before you gank a lane, or else you could end up feeding the enemy laner instead of securing the kill for yourself. Now for a successful gank, you'll want to initiate with your bear stance to cut the enemy off, making sure to position yourself between the enemy champ and their tower. After you stun him with your brilliant smile since you've been using Colgate Total Lightning Strips, switch to your tiger stance to start dealing more damage than a 2 liter bottle of coke in a Mentos factory. Laugh to yourself as your random dies right before you kill their top laner, then head back into your jungle to farm some more. Since all the camps are available, might as well clear them. Once you've gotten through a significant portion of your jungle, try to make use of your double buffs by ganking lane again, or even more importantly, checking in on your best bud Scuttle. If you see the enemy jungler picking on poor Scuttle, save him from the enemy team by smiting him before the jungler gets a chance to, cause Scuttle wins games. 
Then turn your attention to Master Yi, the high school bully who used to beat up Scuttle in the hallways for his lunch money and his super rad zoo animal stickers. Defend Scuttle's honor by completely destroying everything sacred to Master Yi, including his family, his life, and his human-sized cardboard cutout of Madonna. Cause, I mean, that last one is just... kinda weird. Then treat yourself to the enemy's jungle camp, since they obviously won't be needing them for right now. When you have enough gold, head on back to Foot Locker to sell your overpriced Yeezys and instead buy yourself some Boots of Swiftness, which are both functional and fashionable. I mean, that is if you think the latest trends in elf footwear is fashionable. Now that you've gone through your jungle a couple of times, go apply some pressure around the map. If you find that a teammate has absolutely no idea how to push a lane or win a trade, go visit them to educate them on the topic. After you get yourself another kill and a pretty sweet bounty paper towel on your head, feel free to farm a bit more while always keeping an eye on the minimap. If you see the enemy jungler attempting to solo dragon, run down there and gently remind him that he's not capable of such a noble and daring quest. Naturally, feel free to flash your tier 5 mastery in a good old show of BM, and then go huddle or cuddle with a befuddled scuttle in the muddled puddle that is the bottom river. Now why, you ask, would you want to go huddle or cuddle with a befuddled scuttle in the muddled puddle of bottom river? Well, cause scuttle wins games. After a little more farming, you'll have enough to start building a Blade of the Ruin King, so head on back to Costco to buy yourself a Bilgewater Cutlass. Now some people have asked if a Gwenzo's Rageblade would be a better item to build, and it depends on pretty much the team you're playing against. If they have a bunch of tanks or a lot of kiting ability, choose the Bork, and if they have a bunch of squishies, grab yourself a Rageblade. Now it's late enough into the game that you should have a pretty good feel for which lanes are doing well and which need more help. So if you see a bunch of enemies grouping up for a surprise birthday celebration for your mid laner, head on over and see if you can crash that party. Luckily for you, you're Udyr, so just stun them under tower and let your tiger stance do the rest. After making Lissandra think you're not going to go in on her, have your support set up a kill for you, then take her out in a deadly show of force indicating to the enemy team that you ain't no one to mess with. Remember that teammates play better if you aren't a complete douchebag to them, so keep to yourself when they make a bad play and encourage them when they do well. Now this time you should also be trying to get to 30 stacks on your devourer, so taking jungle camps and objectives like Dragon and Mega Scuttle is important. But if those aren't available, remember that kills on enemy champions also give you a stack, and now that Mega Scuttle only gives you 2 stacks instead of 5, it's not as pressing that you go there right away, unlike if you think you're having a stroke. Call 911 immediately and make sure you can recognize the signs of a stroke victim. You could save a life. Unfortunately for Darius, you're not always in lifeguard mode, so after you stun him, finish him off with the help of your teammate, and as always, flash your tier 5 mastery so they know who's really in charge. Now you can take Mega Scuttle since they have no vision and top lane has been taken care of, and just like that, you're at 30 stacks. Normally, you'll want to be sated by around 18 minutes, but depending on the game and your level of skill, you may get sated faster or slower. And now that you're sated, head back to the mall to upgrade your Cutlass into a Blade of the Ruin King, then get back out there and help your teammates get more objectives. Your top laner may be even less harmful than a baby bird who has marshmallows for wings, but it's important to give all your laners some love, so go help out your bot lane instead. Since you already killed the ADC, there's really no point in having four people chase the enemy like a group of Weight Watchers chasing a triple chocolate decadence cake on a go-kart, so instead have a quick chat with Dragon before you head back to the garden center at your local Home Depot to pick up the component parts of Thorn Mail. Now this fourth item should be one that provides some armor or magic resist, so depending on their team count, pick between a Thorn Mail, Maul of Malmordius, or a ZZ Rot Portal. And now you can finally make true to your promise to gank top lane like a 5th grader running for class president promises to have 3 hour long recesses, pudding every day, and finally going through with that class action lawsuit to fire that creepy gym teacher Mr. Pedophile. But I mean, you gotta grab red buff first. Take advantage of opportunities where enemies are out of place, and join the enemy top laner and saying hasta la vista baby to their jungler. After your minion wave finally catches up, feel free to go all in on the enemy in a super fair matchup of skill and immense knowledge of complex game mechanics, then take down their towers like an angry trebuchet with an attitude. Then head back to your favorite grocery store cause you're in the mood for something nasty. Something almost... rotten. So start building a ZZ Rod or whatever and go group up for a team fight. Wait for someone to initiate, then fly in there like JJ the Jet playing on cocaine and grab yourself not one, not two, but three kills and the ace for your team. Practice your shot calling skills by heading to Baron, but first you know you gotta head back and grab a quick cup of tea with Scuttle, cause Scuttle wins games. With all four of your teammates with you, you'll be able to meld Baron faster than the polar ice caps. Wake up America, we're killing our planet! And then just recall to keep building towards that ZZ, cause this game's so easy you could practically take a nap. Since you're so close to completing it, head down to clear some jungle camps to get a little extra gold instead of prostituting out your body to strangers like you did last time. While you're in the area, go say hello to one of the enemies by stunning them and then trying to run circles around them like a redneck doing donuts in his truck in a Kroger's parking lot. Unfortunately, if they keep stunning you, it's not as easy to be in them, so hit him with a tiger attack then walk away like any action hero from any action movie, all while shamelessly promoting your YouTube channel to the enemy team, of which two actually subscribe that game. 
After you take their turret, go take more of their jungle camps. Before you know it, you found yourself in a Mexican standoff. Even if your thrush goes in, you're a man of honor. You would never attack a defenseless little guy who couldn't even hurt a fly. Oh god, he's got an axe! Take him out! Ah, uh, see, nothing to worry about here. Now it's time to secure yourself another dragon, so head on over there and along the way, grab some flowers and a get well soon card for Scuttle's wife Sandra, who was the victim of a terribly violent kidnapping in which she was tortured by being forced to listen to hours upon hours of kids bop CDs until the cops found her three days later in the romantic comedy section of an abandoned blockbuster. The doctors say she may never regain her hearing, but we're hopeful. Once you say farewell to Scuttle and take out Dragon, recall to finally finish building your ZZ Rot. Start working on your last item as well, which depending on the game can be another offensive item like Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, or Rage Blade, or you can go more defensive, building a Banshee's Veil for a lot of MR, a Guardian's Angel for more armor and magic resist, or a Frozen Heart or Deadman's Plate for a bunch of armor. Your final build should include those first three core items, consisting of Devour, Boots of Swiftness, and a Blade of the Ruined King or Rage Blade, then mix and match between the rest to complete your build. Once you've got your final build, you can easily solo Baron, after taking Scuttle of course, cause Scuttle wins games. After you die a little bit on the inside because Vayne and Thresh ruined your solo by gently sneezing on Baron enough to warrant an assist, go pick a lay to split push. Naturally, several enemies will abandon the team fight they were in to attempt to shut you down, but by catching them off guard by flashing over a wall, you'll pad your stats a bit more before you take down the remaining towers and inhibitors. They probably won't give you the satisfaction of destroying their nexus, so instead enjoy the victory screen after they finally decided to surrender. Next time they play against you, they'll say, Looks like we won't win this year, dear. We're up against an Udyr. Heh, <laughs> well there you have it. There's your updated, updated AD Udyr Jungle Guide.